What's going on, Uncle Hitch? GKM Gaming with another LEGO Legacy Heroes unbox video for you, and today I'm breaking down the entire anniversary event, Node for Node. Now, this is kind of annoying because I actually recorded this video this morning, and apparently my microphone setting was set to nothing. So I recorded this without audio, so that kind of sucks. Uh, but I also do want to retract a statement from my last video. I thought that some of those figures were required figures and they were actually override figures. So I'm just going to kind of break down each node right now, let you know what the required figures are, let you know what the, the reward is going to be. I'm going to try to fly through this real quick, make this not the longest video in the world. But I do want to give you guys some of this detailed information. So anyway, the first node on the first map, you are given an override. So you're given Storm and Burnabus. You're given Willa as an ally. No required tag. And the prize is 10 Jester Gogo -Go tiles. Which, for if you're an early game player, Jester Gogo -Go tiles are awesome. He's actually a really good early game figure. That's not the easiest in the world to get. A lot of us have had them for a really long time, though, so it's not that big a deal. But whatever, you get a chance to use Castle. You get a chance to get a free Willa on your team, and if you're a newer player, you haven't got to use Willa yet, you get a little taste of what us elites get all the time. Next, we have the first hard node. They give you a few pirates here. Nonsuch, Scarlet, a little Redbeard. I'm probably gonna would go like double Redbeard if I was like in my early game and I had them, which you probably should have them at that point. So I'd probably go like double red beard, double scarlet if possible. Again, these early nodes don't really matter what you use. But one thing I was really, really impressed with was the reward for this node, right? So it actually gives you 10 earnest tiles when you finish it, or 10 earnest, I'm sorry, 10 willa tiles plus a 42% ch chance to farm willa. So the drop rate on the first map the percentage is really good, and there are some really good characters. Like, Willa is somebody who, especially if you're early game, there's a chance to stack up with some Willa tiles, maybe unlock her a lot earlier than we would have as early game players. And, you know, she's really only accessible through All-Star events and the Master Shop. And if you're a newer player, the Master Shop is not super accessible to you, and that All-Star event is really not going to be that accessible either. Then we have another regular node here. They give you a Jens. They give you a Kartofsky, they give you a Quincy, my boy, and the prize is a modest 10 Aurora tiles, which isn't that big a deal, but whatever, you know, it is, it is what it is. Then we got a little bit of city action coming here on this next hard node. They give you an Ash, they give you Clay, top one figure in the game, and they give you Chef. And this is where you get a chance to get some earnest tiles, right? You get 10 earnest tiles, you get a 42% drop rate, even though, yes, it's only one tile, but earnest is kind of a tough figure to get. The not such node is gated behind him. I like this. I, I like that you have a chance to finally unlock. I haven't unlocked earnest yet. So this is a chance for someone like me to finally unlock earnest, or even newer players who have been around since these, you know, since this dev team took over and really started churning out those new minifigures. So I like what they're really doing on this first map. Great drop rates, great, great drop rates and really awesome, awesome prizes. Next node we're looking at, it looks like we are getting Willa, Malik, and Grim Helma, right? So that's also a pretty cool node. Again, no tag requirements yet on the first map, so you could kind of use whatever you got. I think that that's fair. Newer, like to gate things for newer players around tag requirements would be kind of ridiculous. 10 Spooky Girl tiles, kind of like a weak reward though, so I'm not really that excited about this node. Next hard node, you get to use some Ninjagos though. They give you a Master Wu, which hey, if you're somebody who doesn't have Master Wu, that's pretty cool. Uh, you could also double Wu, which is always, always a good time. Always double Wu, you know? Always double Wu it. Always double Wu. And as a prize, you can farm Gens, which again, just like Willa, Gens is a Master Shop All-Star Event exclusive figure. I feel like Jens was a little more accessible than Willa, but I could be wrong. Is there another place to get Jens besides All-Star and Master Event? Maybe just Time Quest, stuff like that. But either way, chance to get those Master Shop figures. I, I think it's a really cool thing. 
And then the final note of map one kind of gives you like a, that little mini taste of like, hey, we're gonna give you a whole team. You could pick a character. They give you Primo, Leo, Magisto, Yeti, very random assortment of minifigures, two open slots that you could use for anybody. Uh, it really, it doesn't look like that hard of a node, but again, I kind of think as a veteran player, I don't think like, oh, what would, this, would this node be hard if I was, you know, level 38? I just, I don't think that way. It's hard for me to, to process that because I haven't been that level in so long. But you do get 10 Super Wrestler tiles as a reward, plus that 42% drop rate chance to farm Super Wrestler. So again, you know, he's... He was the easier of the two between Super Wrestler and Cork Cop to get, so it's like, it's a nice prize, but I feel like Ernest is a better prize, Willa is a better prize, Jen's is a better prize. For the last note, they should have picked something a little better. Now, let's get into what you all came here for. Map number two starts off with a hard node, Castle Required. They give you Reaper, they give you Scully, they give you Ghost. I would probably throw like Willa Basil on this team and maybe Magisto or maybe my Grim Helma just for a little bit more of that spooky army synergy. But if you're somebody who has the spooky army, this is actually a really cool node for you. You'll probably dominate it. I don't know that it looks too hard to do, but the prize is some corn cob guy tiles. Now, the drop rate really falls off in this map, right? You had that 42% drop rate, and now you got Corn Cob Guy at a 32% drop rate. And you're like, well, you know, 10%'s not that bad. Oh, trust me, it gets a lot worse as we go on and on through this brick pace. Next up, you got the Pirate Node. I kind of wish they would have made this an Imperial Required Node to make it a little more challenging. But I do like, they give you Ernest, they give you Rita, they give you a non-such. So it's not that hard of a node uh, because you could probably just throw Redbeard and Scarlet on there and you can pretty much dominate anything that they're going to throw at you. But uh, again, I wish that they would have required Imperials. I, I wish there was an Imperial node and a Buccaneer node. Like that would be kind of cool. I like the more specific tag requirements. And for this, they're offering you some Reaper tiles. Now... Reaper is an interesting character because Malak is heavily gated behind Reaper, Grim Helma, and Scully. I believe you need to have them all at five star just to be able to farm him. So definitely Reaper is somebody you might want to consider using your energy to farm. Downside is 28% one tile drop rate is kind of AIDS. So um, yeah, there's that. Next up, you have everybody's favorite team to use. Spooky, 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 spooky. For another hard node, they give you a Willa. They give you a zombie. You have a lot of options you could use for this, especially because since Spooky Army came out, Spooky was already like one of the top factions in the game. Now I, you know, it, now it's even stronger. Really overshadowed by classic space, but it is what it is. Ironically enough, you're facing some space here, and you're also facing. Primo. The prize is non-such. 28% uh, drop rate. I don't know, man. There's such good drop rate. Like, the first map has some really good prizes with Ernest and Jens and Willa and even Super Ruster to a cer certain extent. I don't know that I would just throw energy at these characters in the second map with a 28% drop rate. It made sense for Reaper with me. It doesn't make as much sense for Nonsuch because Nonsuch is like your end goal with the Imperials. It's, you, you know, you get Ernest so that you could farm Nonsuch. Uh, you know, I, I try to get things that I need for things. Now is my favorite node. I cannot wait to make a video guide on this. You've got the city node. City nodes are always fun because city sucks. So it's actually really fun to use these shitty city teams. But because they give you a je uh, an Ash, a Sal, and a Chef, I think you could actually put together a really interesting team with this. So I would say double Sal and double Ash, because then you get lots of damage, lots of courage stacks, you're throwing taunt back and forth between the two Sals. And then you have one spot left, probably Aurora and Glider, just because Aurora Glider makes Chef insanely good with his like his heal becomes much much better when you're using aurora and the glider because he's also getting heals a heal percentage per buff that he's giving out 
you're facing off against space in this node, so space is kind of difficult to deal with. There's Gorwells, there's Jens, there's Leos. And again, you don't have the best city team, but I like that you can kind of, I'm pretty sure you can double up the Ash uh, on the override. I could be wrong though, actually. I think you could only double Sal. So actually, I take back what I said. You, you can't double Ash. You can double Sal because he's the ally. That Ash is an override. You have to use their Ash instead of your Ash. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe use Primo. I think that's what I used last time. Uh, and then, but this is a big node because this is the node you get Gorwell with. This is the most important node in the game. Even though it's only a 28% drop rate, Gorwell is only like seldom available. I've been playing the game basically since launch and I only have a five star Gorwell at this point. So it's definitely been a grind. Um, but I kind of like that. You know, I like that there's some figures in the game that are like long grinds, long hauls, and that you really have to work to get. Next, we have the Space Node, and this node, it's very difficult to make a Space Node challenging. Like, Space is so powerful, specifically Classic Space, and even if you don't have a full Classic Space team, you still could probably put together a really good Space team for this, if you have Gorwell at all, right, and any type of healing. But they're, doesn't even matter. They're giving you Andreas, they're giving you Jens, they're giving you Quincy, so you have two, like, small, little, tiny healers. You throw Gorwell on there, you throw Reed, and even like a low level Allen, which is most people should have at least a low star level Allen. That what you're facing is like, look, you're facing a, a freaking Winston and Poppy in the first wave. I'm sorry, two Poppies. So this, like this node, I don't even think I'm gonna make a guide on this node because it just looks so ridiculously easy to complete. And it, they're giving you Leo tiles from it. So you're basically gonna get 10 free Leo tiles. If you, I think the city node is like that big, like, hey, if you can get past here, you're probably pretty good till maybe the last node. You might not be able to gold star that, depending on your level. Again, Leo is somebody that like, it's exciting to be able to farm him in this event, but he's also an end game, like, event figure. Like, he's the end game in that brick pace. So I feel like I would rather go after an Ernest or go after a Reaper or a Gorwell than him. Next, we have the Ninjago node, and you can double woo it, right? So I'd probably go double woo, Garmadon, J, and I don't know, maybe Kai. Zane is also really good. If you want a little extra healing, you can go Nia. If you really want to get crazy with it, you can go Great White. I don't know if Cole and Masako are going to be out in time for this. I have no idea when they're dropping. If you have them, you might as well use them because they are pretty cool characters. I actually recall this node being like a little bit difficult in the last wave when it jumps to this Ghostbuster, like full Ghostbusters double Slimer part. But I still think level 70, double Woo, Garmadon, you're gonna be able to get through this pretty easily. May, it might be harder to get through it without any deaths though, because there is no revives on the Ninjago end. You get a chance to get some Santa tiles. Again, I know it's tempting to want to farm Santa, but it's a 26% drop rate, which sucks, right? Like that's a really bad drop rate. And also like he's like he's low, he's good in low star. So I mean, it's justifiable to, oh, I can get him to another star. Don't farm Santa from this event. There's way harder to get figures but i also talk from a completionist uh standpoint if you're someone who's like i gotta run chill i gotta run santa i need i gotta do this like hey go after it get get your santa then if that's what you want but i think you're better off going after like a gorwell or a reaper and honestly to me the big prize of this event is Ernest. Last node though, you get a chance to get some Malik tiles. And if you can beat this node, you get a 25% one tile drop rate for Malik. That's right, people. You could have a whole one in four chance of getting Malik in this farm. Great. Anyway, this was a fun node last time where like they basically give you a whole team and you could choose one character. I think they gave you Yuppie last time and I chose Aurora. This time they're giving you Aurora and Santa. So they're giving you two revives. I think you gotta run Ice Glider as the set just to make Aurora, you know, the, as useful as she possibly could be. 
They give you Garmadon, they give you Nonsuch, they give you Leo. They've given you a lot of power, firepower. Like, Nonsuch is pretty strong. Garmadon and Leo are really strong. For your last slot, you can justify Yuppie and go with a Triple Revive. I have no problem with that. If you have Andreas, Andreas makes sense too. If you have Jens, Jen, there, there's a lot of things that you could do to make sense. I actually, wild card thinking though, might run, try it with Yeti and the Ice Glider. Right, because he's going to get some synergies from the Ice Glider. It's, it's not an easy node either. Like You have to face a full Pirate Wave, followed by a full Spooky Castle Wave, followed by a full Ninjago Wave. Right, so two revives, you should be good with two revives, but having the third and also the fact that Yuppie does bring a lot of offense with his ultimate, I don't know. I might try it with Yuppie. My Yuppie is fully maxed out. Uh, Jens would be cool too, though. So, I don't know. I don't know who I'm going to use. I'm thinking Yuppie, though, but we'll see. I'm probably going to make a guide on almost all of these hard nodes. Maybe I'll skip the space node because that's like the stupidest like, that's just not hard at all. Well, that's pretty much all I got for you today, Knuckleheads. Be sure to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding that little bell for some notifications, and as always, remember to knuckle up.